What's going on guys? Welcome back again. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you guys about some of the recent Godzilla toys that I've picked up. And I know in my previous video where I unboxed the NECA 1984 Return of Godzilla figure, I know that I said that was probably my last Godzilla and well, yes and no. Uh, that would technically be my last NECA Godzilla that I picked up, but I have had my eye on some of the new Bandai uh, Godzilla products that have been out on the shelves in the toy departments at Walmart and Target. And I've kind of kind of succumbed to uh, just how cool Godzilla toys are in general. So I've been picking up some Godzilla toys from the Bandai line, and some of them are actually under the Playmates line, but they are actually the same figures. Uh, anyway, but I wanted to start off today, guys, and show you this recent pickup from Target. Uh, now this big bad boy right here is an 11 inch Godzilla. And as you can see here, it is from the Toho series. Uh, so it says Godzilla 2004, and Godzilla's 2004 film was The Final Wars. So this likeness is from the Final Wars Godzilla film, uh, but it is in this open air package, and he does stand about 11 inches tall. So we're going to get this guy unboxed, and we're going to take a look at some of the Bandai uh, Godzilla figures and some of the um, uh, other kaiju figures that Bandai has also been putting out as well. So guys, with uh -oh. I better hurry and get to the unboxing area. Sounds like someone's coming and he doesn't sound happy. So guys, my name is Matt and this is the Pop Complex. Alright guys, welcome back once again to the Pop Complex. As I stated before, we are going to be unboxing this, this uh, Toho series Godzilla. And this is an 11 inch figure. I found this at Target. It is part of the uh, Toho series as you can see here. Uh, so as before, I know NECA had the license for Godzilla previously and they, and they had been producing some uh, very, very bang up uh, figures of Godzilla and his likenesses from some of his iconic films. And I've reviewed some of these on the channel. So uh, links to all of my Godzilla videos, guys, will be in the description below. So we're going to take a look at this guy right here. Now, this guy is nowhere near the sculpting and quality of a NECA figure. Uh, but regardless, it is a cool figure. And hey, it's Godzilla. So what's not to love? Uh, so I know that Bandai has been producing some of these open box uh, Godzilla and Kaiju figures from the Kaiju Toho MonsterVerse. Uh, but this guy is actually an 11 inch figure and he's uh, quite a bit bigger than the rest of the figures. The rest of them are around the six and a half inch range. And I will be doing some reviews on the channel of some of those as I pick them up, guys. I've been picking up a lot of the Bandai Godzilla lately. Uh, but if you look here in the corner, this actually says Playmates Toys, which was a little bit puzzling to me at first, but I did some research and realized that Playmates is putting out uh, Bandai, uh, Godzilla, and Kaiju figures under the name Playmates. And I think that has to do with the fact that there was some sort of licensing deal, uh, some sort of contractual obligation to produce Godzilla figures. And what I think happened is they just struck a deal with Bandai to go ahead and issue the existing Bandai sculpted figures under the Playmates banner. So I think that's what happened, guys. But regardless if it's Playmates or Bandai, the figures are all the same, same sculpt, same everything. They are the same exact figure. So Bandai, Playmates, they're currently the same exact line. So this is the Toho series here. And as you can see, we'll take a quick look at the box art. It says Godzilla 2004. Um, that's actually a sculpt from the 2004 Godzilla Toho film, The Final Wars, although it doesn't say it here on the package. We'll flip this guy around. He is one of the larger figures that I've had the opportunity here to unbox on the channel. Uh, but we'll look at the side here. There's some uh, artwork again there of the uh, Godzilla sculpt that we see. We'll flip it around to the back and we see a nice uh, ginormous photo of the figure posed. And as you can see here, there's a little bit of a bio that you can read 
at the top here, guys, first appearing in 1954, talking about Godzilla, but you can pause and read that if you like. Godzilla.com, Playmates Toys, the barcode and legal information is here on the bottom, guys. Not gonna spend a whole lot of time on that. And on the other side, on the other side, the Godzilla and Toho series logo. So this guy is ginormous. So without any further ado, let's get Godzilla out of the packaging and take a look. All right, guys, and here is 2004 Godzilla out of the packaging. So the first detail I wanna focus on here is the tail, which was packaged separately for obvious reasons. We can't have a, uh, a large uh, pointed tail sticking awkwardly out of the package. So it is packaged separately here with a peg, as you can see that will go right in here into uh, the uh, adjoining socket there on his tail. So guys, let me pop that in really quick and then we'll do a full review of Godzilla. All right, guys, I have the tail in place and I had to pull way back on this guy so we could get a really good shot of, uh, of the entire figure and the tail is pretty massive. I know in my previous Godzilla NECA videos, I talked about um, how difficult sometimes it was to get the tail uh, into the socket because it was packaged separately and you had to soak that in some uh, warm water for a few seconds to pop that in, work that in, but didn't have too much trouble with this. It kind of just uh, swiveled right on in there, a little bit of force, but no big deal. So there's the massive tail and I absolutely just love this figure, guys. And, and again, it's, it's nowhere near the sculpting and quality that you get with a NECA figure, but what's great about this line, guys, it's very, very affordable. I know some of the six and a half inch figures are like $12.99 at Walmart or, or Target, wherever you find them. I think uh, this guy was maybe uh, 17, I think. Uh, but that's a great deal for a, a massive figure of this size. And it's pretty simplistic, guys. It reminds me of toys when I was a child, uh, childhood toys where the articulation was very simple, the sculpting was simple. It has that childhood nostalgia and feel to it. It seems like that toy companies are sort of moving back uh, in some of their toys with uh, some of the more simplistic designs that do harken back to those uh, 80s and 90s toys with the simplistic uh, articulation. And sometimes I think a figure that has too much articulation or articulation that isn't uh, very well designed or hidden within the figure uh, kind of takes away from the realism and the sculpt of the figure, especially if you're just displaying the figure uh, in a pose. So uh, we'll take a look at Godzilla's articulation here. Now it looks as if there's a cut here behind the neck and that there would be some articulation here in the head, but I've manipulated that and he is not articulated anywhere here on the head or the neck. The jaw has no articulation either. He's in an open mouth roaring pose, which is fine. And you can see here the work on his, uh, his dorsal spines, his dorsal fins on his back. That's uh, a decent job there, guys. Pretty, pretty straightforward. You know what you're getting into uh, with Godzilla and the dorsal spine. So I'll pull in and get a closer look here. The only complaint I have here is that if you look really close within these spines, you can see uh, some seam lines where uh, the pieces have been put together and assembled. But again, guys, this is a very simple toy, uh, very uh, simple and affordable. So. Uh, can't really ask for much more at that price point. Uh, but I'm gonna pull back here, guys, and give you a close look at his head sculpt. All right, guys, there is Godzilla's head sculpt. You can see he has the orange eyes there, and I'll flip it around here very carefully. Open mouth roaring. There are the fangs. As you can see, the, the tongue is actually painted a separate color, so that's, that's pretty cool. And then the back of the head here, as you can see, his his ridges, his uh, head ridges go into those back dorsal spines, those fins. Well, let's pull back into the figure here, guys, and take a look. So focusing on the rest of his articulation, there's a cut right here at his arms. So his arms can go all the way back here to his back. Can't get a full 360 degree rotation because of the sculpt but it's a very simple articulation. So his hands can go all the way down at his sides, up like this, which I think looks really cool. And the same articulation here on the other side, guys. So nice, 
Nice roaring pose there with claws up. And there's no articulation here at the waist until you get down to the legs, the thighs here. It's just a straight forward and back leg articulation here. Oh, and I just discovered that in addition to that, there is some ankle articulation. There's just a left and right ankle swivel here in the feet, guys. Same on the other side with that leg. So he's posed with one of his uh, legs slightly forward. So really the most ideal pose as far as height wise is, is like right here with him standing straight up. You could probably bend his legs a little bit and get more of a forward leaning in pose, but you sort of lose uh, some of that stability. So kind of, kind of like a statue again, guys, with the articulation. So not much you can really do there, but let's take a look at the tail articulation. Now you can see a cut right here, but there is no articulation at that cut. That's just an assembly seam right there. The articulation starts about right here where you adjoin the tail to the, to the ball joint, to the peg hole that was there. So you can get a full 360 degree tail rotation there. And there's no restriction of movement there from the dorsal spines. And then this piece goes all the way around to the, uh, majority of the tip of the tail here. And there's a seam there. You can get a full 360 degree rotation there, uh, but it looks a little unnatural without those spines being lined up here. I think he looks just fine like he is, guys, with his tail in this pose. Looks really nice. Might take a little bit of uh, manipulation and sort of figuring out the logistics to get this guy displayed on a shelf without his uh, tail getting in the way too much, but there he is, guys. There is the 11-inch Toho Godzilla 2004 from Godzilla The Final Wars. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, and let me know what uh, Bandai and Playmates figures that you have in this Godzilla series. And really quick, while we're on the subject of the Playmates uh, Bandai, I was looking here, and I'm seeing just a serial number uh, stamped on the bottom here of this hollow foot uh, but there is some text here inside of the foot which is so small you can barely read it it does have a date stamp and it does have playmates molded here you can barely see it and then toho limited among the rest of the of the lettering of the of the words there but i do know that some of the bandai figures in the six and a half inch line uh, playmates actually just stamped uh, with with like ink they printed on the bottom of the feet they just printed the word playmates over the uh, stamped in bandai logo uh, so that they could i guess fulfill that contractual obligation for the toys but that's just my guess guys if you know any more about that let me know down in the comments let me know what you think guys check out my other godzilla and my neca unboxing videos i'll put a link to every single one of my godzilla videos to date in the description of this video and the most important thing is guys if you're not subscribed to the channel already hit that subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified that way anytime i upload a new video to the pop complex you'll be the first to know about it thanks guys and have an amazing monstrous day